Welcome back to Logal Stories. My name's Logan and I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to be reading again from Naughty Mr. McCaw by Shirley Askew. Big thanks to Austin Macaulay Publishers for letting us read this book today. Last time we heard about how Naughty Mr. McCaw had nibbled all Auntie Venezuela's pretend strawberries and cherries on her hat. She went off to get the kids from school and then all of a sudden had to start rushing home because she forgot to put Mr. McCaw back inside his cage. Oh, he's going to be up to some mischief. If you haven't seen the first two chapters yet, they're on Lurgle Stories, the YouTube channel. So head over there and the video will be ready for you to watch. And while you're there, click subscribe so you don't miss any more. We're going to start with chapter three today. Let's see what Mr. McCall has in store for us today. While Auntie Venezuela had been out, Mr. McCall had been exploring upstairs. It was somewhere he'd never been before. This would be such fun. First, he went into a big, big bedroom. Suddenly, he had a very nasty fright. He had hopped onto a large table with bits and pieces all over the place. Standing gingerly on one leg, there was no room to put the other one down. He saw staring at him another macaw. Why did no one tell him another macaw lived upstairs? Funny, it wasn't moving. Or rather, it only moved when he did. He moved his beak sideways. So did the other macaw. He put his leg down to balance. So did his rival. He was sick of this. He'd give it a good peck and that would show him who was boss in this house. He bent forward and gave a good hard peck at the face of the other macaw. Golly, that hurt his beak. He shot back. So did the other fellow. Suddenly, it dawned on Mr. McCaw that it wasn't a rival after all. It was himself in one of those shiny silvery things Auntie Venezuela looked into to put her hat on. We know what that is, don't we? That's right, it's a mirror. Silly Mr. McCaw. He decided to look around him. On the table he was standing on was a very interesting collection of objects demanding his attention. First, he saw a round thing like a pot full of soft, squashy stuff. He put one claw in it and rubbed it around his bill. Ooh, that was so soft and cool. He did it again and kept sniffing its flowery smell. It was just like Fenella smelt when she had had a bath. Then next, he put his other claw in the squishy stuff and smeared it all down his feathers. This was great fun. Why had no one told him upstairs was such an adventure? Then, also on the table thing, was a long red tube that got longer and longer when he twisted it. He suddenly remembered he had seen Fenella twist it and put it around her mouth. If he held it carefully in his claw, he could use it as a crayon and colour a picture as he had seen Kinsey and Jake do. He held it firmly in his claw and twisted the new red crayon out of its tube. He rubbed it backwards and forwards across the shiny silvery stuff where the other macaw that now wasn't, had been. 
wouldn't the children be pleased? What a lovely surprise for them all when they came back from school. Wouldn't Fenella be pleased to see all the lovely changes he had made to her room? I don't think so. He heard the gate click. The children were back from school. He would keep the room as a surprise for later. Hopping carefully down the stairs, he wriggled back onto his perch just as the front door opened. Auntie Venezuela exploded into the room. Oh good, he's just as I left him on his perch. I suppose he's been asleep. The children looked at each other and giggled behind their hands. Jake winked at Kinsey. They both knew Mr. McCaw better than that. What will you think their mummy Fenella will find when she sees her bedroom? Chapter 4 Fenella was feeling very tired. She worked at the local hospital in A&E and she had been called in today to help with a serious road accident on the motorway where several people had been injured. All extra staff had been needed. Now, with aching feet and feeling very hungry, she pulled up to the curb in her little blue car. She would put it in the garage later. All she was looking forward to. After seeing the children, and Auntie Venezuela of course, was a hot shower. Then, one of Auntie Venezuela's lovely casseroles. Mmm, yummy. Funny the way everyone, including herself, called her mother Auntie Venezuela. She dragged her tired body up the last of the six steps and put her key in the lock. The waft of onions and delicious meat and vegetables wrapped around her. Hello, Mummy! Kinsey looked up from her drawing. Hello, darling. Is that a picture of a haystack? No, Mummy. Kinsey was quite put out. It's a picture of you. Can't you see? Oh, yes. Now I look at it carefully. I can see that it's very like me on a windy day. Lovely, darling. Where's Jake? He's in the other room watching TV. Silly me. I should have guessed that. Guess that! Guess that! Squeaked Mr. McCaw, anxious not to be left out of the conversation. Oh, there you are, Fenella, said Auntie Venezuela. Be quiet, Mr. McCaw. Come on, supper is bubbling itself dry. She bustled off to the kitchen. I won't be a minute, Mum. I must just have a quick shower and wash the smell of disinfectant off myself. She disappeared up the stairs. Come on, Kinsey, clear all that stuff away and help me set the... Auntie V stopped suddenly. She didn't get any further. A terrible shriek of horror bounded down the stairs. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! came from Fenella. Jake came rushing in from watching TV. It wasn't me! It wasn't me! I haven't even been upstairs! he wailed. Fenella, wrapped in a bath towel, came bounding down the stairs. No, it was him! she pointed an accusing finger at Mr. McCaw. He sat by the door of his cage, picking from his feathers bits of leftover fruit and nuts he'd had for his dinner. Funny how bits got stuck, but they made a tasty snack after his afternoon nap. Was Fenella pleased with him because he'd reorganised her room? He squinted one eye slowly and fixed it on Fenella. No. That was definitely not a pleased with you look. He was left in no doubt as to what Fenella's feelings were when she suddenly grabbed him by his left claw and bundled him into his cage. 
there was definitely a bad atmosphere around here. Just come and see what that wretched bird has done. No, that was certainly not the tone of voice of someone especially pleased with a redecorated bedroom. Everyone set off for the stairs, Kinsey and Jake elbowing each other out of the way. They were usually the ones in trouble, and it was a change to have someone else in the hot seat. Auntie Venezuela wheezed and wobbled her way up, step by step, at a considerably slower pace. Just look! Just look what that awful bird has done! He's smeared my best new lipstick all over my mirror and trodden in my best face cream and hopped all over my bed with his greasy claws. It's back to, to the zoo with him tomorrow. This time, it seemed to the horrified children, Mum really meant it. Auntie Venezuela just stood there and looked at the mess. She really couldn't say much for once in her life. She knew it was partly her fault. If only she had put Mr. McCaw back in his cage. Come and have some supper before my casserole is burnt black. Burnt black! Burnt black! Mr. McCaw screeched from his cage. Burnt black! How do you think the children are going to feel when they lose their pet? I really hope something else happens instead. I don't want Mr. McCaw to be taken back to the zoo. He didn't really know. Parrots don't really know what lipstick is or face cream. When, even when I was a little girl, I didn't know and I drew all over the place with my mummy's lipstick. I hope something else happens instead. Maybe, maybe Fenella, the mummy, changes her mind. Fingers crossed. We'll find out next time. See you next time. Bye.